we're going to Antarctica because in the time period we're looking in is the Triassic, so a little after 250 million years ago. And all the southern continents are united into one landmass at that time. Actually, almost all the continents are together, but the southern ones are the ones we care about. In South Africa, like Adam has been to, is really, really, really well studied and understood, and it actually forms the basis for a lot of our knowledge of that time. It's connected to Antarctica. So obviously Antarctica is an extreme place back then. It's warm, there's plants and everything, but they still go without sunlight for some significant amount of time of the year. And there's all kinds of ecological and evolutionary questions we can probably answer with almost anything we find. The great thing about uh, going to uh, an underexplored region like Antarctica <laughs> is that um, you're almost guaranteed to find something new. Yeah, something everything you find matters, even if it's been known a little yeah, too. Something that, that's, that's never been known to science, and so, um, you know, whatever we find there, we know it's going to be very, very important. Mm. What's cool is some of the stuff they have found in the past are animals that we know from South Africa, so kind of familiar forms that you're just kind of extending what we know about them. But other, other things like giant, giant amphibians, like that Christian has found, are you know 15 some feet long carnivorous amphibians, which aren't well known from other places, which is pretty cool. So it's a weird mix. Yeah, we can sh we can show you some of these that we have in the collection. Yeah, this is Cryostega, which belongs to that group I mentioned earlier, the, the Temnospondyl uh, amphibians. They're big. They're they're a lot big of the old ones are big. Yeah. So let's bring it over and compare it with some of the other stuff from Antarctica and from Africa. So this might not look like much, but you're looking at the very end of the snout, like here's the very front of the nose, there's a nostril right there, and if you look on the underside, you can see he's got lots of teeth going on. Some of them are missing, some of them aren't, about in the middle and along the actual edge where you have your teeth. And what to keep in mind is that this is the, not like, you know, his eyes are here and this is the back of the skull, this is the very tip of the snout. This thing's skull is big. This is one of the guys that we have found curled up in burrows before um, from in South Africa. Um, which, and he's known from Antarctica as well. So this one isn't from Antarctica, but still adorable, right? <laughs> yeah, one of, uh, one of our collaborators, Roger Smith, who's a curator at the uh, South African Museum in Cape Town, found a specimen of Thrinaxodon on a recent trip. And it, it looked almost identical to this, the classic sort of curled up uh, uh, posture there. And yep. um, yeah, you often find them in, like this. So Lystrosaurus is probably the most famous stuff from Antarctica now because it was used a lot back in the 50s, 60s as evidence for continental drift. So we said Lystrosaurus is like one of the most uh, abundant animals all over South Africa. And it's been found in Antarctica, and Australia, and South America, is that right? Yep. So, I mean, this guy's everywhere, and so it was used kind of back in the day as like, this animal is this really short, squatty little thing that would probably never be able to cross an ocean. Why is it in all these places? Maybe because all the continents used to hang out. 